Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about SQL and data definition language under that. What is SQL? It is a programming language for storing and processing information in a relational database. It was introduced when relational model was introduced in 1970s. The SQL was introduced which was initially known as structured English query language. It was standardized by ANSI in 1986 and IOSU by 1987. So basically SQL can use statements to store, update, remove, search or retrieve the information that are stored in the databases and also to maintain and optimize the database performance. When we talk about the SQL commands, there are, they are basically categorized into different groups based on its functionalities and some of them are the data definition language. The database administrators use this SQL uh, commands to design the database structure. The structures can be the database, the tables, the views, the sequences, etc. So, the DDL commands are used by the database engineers to modify or create or modify these structures as per the business rules provided. Coming to the data manipulation language, once the database structure is created, the data within that can be manipulated or otherwise maintained processed using the data definition, data manipulation commands. That is, we can either insert data into it or we can update the data from the table or delete them. Data query language, select is such a command wherein we will be able to retrieve the information required based on our requirement from the databases. Data control language, the database administrators use the DCL to manage and authorize the database access for the users. For example, they can grant the, they can use the grant command to permit access for manipulating the tables. We have transaction control language where the relational engine is going to use this particular command to automatically make the database changes. For example, the databases can roll back, assume there is a transaction failure, we can always roll back to the previous consistent state. So, when we see in general, this is an overview of the various SQL commands, DDL, DML, DCL or TCL based on their functionalities. Today, we will see the DDL commands. As we understood, DDL commands are used to create or otherwise the uh, construction of the basic structures of all the required objects of the database. So, the first we will see create command. Now, as we said create command can be used to create any database object like your database, table, view, sequence, etc. Depending upon which database object you are creating, the create command will be followed by that particular object and the user defined name for the object. So, first let us see how to create a database. So, as we discussed create database because we are creating the object database. So, create database and database name. So, let us see the example create database. I have just written it as test db. When it comes to creation of the database, yes I have created. Now, if I have to include file, I mean the tables into the database, I should make sure that that particular database is in use. So, for that reason, we will use the command for selection of the database, use database name. Example, I will use testdb and also there is a command show to see all the existing databases in that particular system that can be used as show databases. Okay? So, create database, database name. Similarly, the next object of the database can be a table or tables are the heart of the database. How do I create the table? 
basically when i want to create the table when i want to store the information three things are very important along with the name of the table i should have each column name its data type and the size allocated for it so the general syntax of creating the table would be create table the table keyword as i am creating the table object create table table name then comes the column name and the data type within bracket i specify the size okay so let us see an example like this depending upon how many attributes the degree of the relation how many attributes i define that many column names will come so here create table emp emp is the name of my relation eid which is of integer data type of size 5 five digits then e name which is where care of 15 where care says that it is a string type of data let's quickly have a view of the data types available in mysql because i am talking with respect to mysql as practically we are going to use mysql as the rdbms for us so now when i talk there is three types of data in mysql string numeric date and time so under string we have character and where care character is of fixed length if at all i say 10 characters it can take 10 character space that means 10 byte is allocated whereas when i say where care this is a variable length string i would have defined it as 50 but if at all the data value i enter contains only 10 characters it will allocate 10 bytes for that so this is basically the where care characteristics and binary this is equal to character but it will be stored as a binary byte string coming to the numeric data i have got bit the bit wise values whenever you want true or false values zero or one can be entered in bit level of instructions or we want boolean yes or no values zero represents true and uh, zero is represented as false and uh, non zero value is represented as true then we can have integer we have got the signed integer range and unsigned integer range integers then float value which can facilitate real number storage where i also give the size as well as the digits in the specified size similarly real and double single precision and double precision real numbers like float we also have double then a fixed point number which is actually decimal this is in our integer range coming to the date and time this date and time data type is very important because many a times based on the data stored we have to calculate different uh, values derive different values like maybe based on the date of birth age has to be calculated and based on the date of joining the experience has to be calculated or the time period has to be calculated or maybe we may have deadlines so in that time this kind of functionalities will be useful and that time we have to define the data type as date and time rather than strings or integers so we have date data type date time then time stamp then time and year these are the some of the samples of the data type that are going to be used now creation of the table is possible by selecting or by using one of the existing table sometimes it will so happen that we want a table to be created by an existing maybe a part of an existing table i want it as a separate table maybe for some simple modification purpose or some other issues in such situation without defining the data type size and constraints again i can make use of the existing table that is what is creating a table new table as a select required columns from an existing table for example i have a customer table already existing i would be using create command to create a duplicate customer table by selecting only customer name and contact number from my customer table it may have so many other columns but my concern is i want the phone numbers of all my customers so i want it in a separate table so that i can make new entries also into it so i can create a new table as duplicate customer as select which columns i want from which particular table 
this is another syntax or format of creating tables. Okay. Coming to this, when you have created certain construct structure, you should also be able to delete it. Okay. So, drop table or truncate table are the two commands which can be used to delete. Now, what is the difference? Remember when I say drop database, database name it will drop the database itself along with all the tables. When I say drop table and table name, it will drop the delete the table along with all its contents including the structure, this table no more exists. Whereas, there is another command called as truncate table. Here, the table structure is intact, but all the contents of the table is removed. It is like I have a room, truncate will be used to vacate the room, the room will be emptied by removing all the elements within it, whereas drop table is like demolishing the room itself. So, drop table can be used to delete a table structure or a database object. Alter table, once I construct the room, I may require certain modifications. Similarly, a database structure which is created may need modifications like I may have to add one more column into it or may I may have to modify the structure of the particular column, maybe I have to increase the uh, size of it or otherwise I want to change the data type or sometimes I may have to drop a column, I do not need it anymore or I may have to add a constraint. So, your alter table statement is used to modify the structure of the table, either add, delete or modify the columns of an existing table. Let us try to see how to add a new column. Whenever I want to add a new column to the table, the syntax would be alter table, table name and the keyword add as I am going to add the new column. Specify the column name, data type and the size as you have done it along with the create command. Okay. Example, alter table emp add date of birth which is of date data type and mobile which is of integer data type of size 10. Similarly, I can use drop command to delete a particular column. So, drop a column. So, alter table, table name, drop column, column name. So, a single column can be dropped or otherwise removed from the table using the drop column attribute of your alter command. Similarly, how to modify? I want to change, change the data type or otherwise change the size. So, alter table, table name, modify, specify the column name and the data type and size of the newly added or whatever is the modified structure. So, alter table emp, modify ename where care of 25. I am not bothered about the previous one. I specify what should be the new instruction, new size or new data type. So, where care of 25. Similarly, as I said, we will learn constraints in our next video, but a constraint can also be added to an existing table using the alter table table name add constraint type. Look at this alter table emp add primary key to which particular column. So, you are going to specify the constraint which has to be newly added. Coming to the next DDL command, it is rename. Once I have constructed the table, maybe I have to rename or once I have defined a name to a column, I have to rename it because of my own uh, policies, I would like to or otherwise for our own understanding, I want to change the name. So, I will use the rename table, table name, give the new table name, rename old name, rename table persons to EMP. I am changing the name to something else. Similarly, column name can be changed by saying alter table, table name, <coughs> rename column. Here directly rename is going to rename the table, whereas using alter table, I can use the rename column old name to the new name. Okay? This is an example, rename column, joining date to, I will write the full form joining Describe statement can be used to see the structure of a table. I have constructed a table. I want to know what are the 
columns there, what is the data type of it, what is the size of it, I can just use describe table name. So, for our example, we have used this EMP table has been created, I can use describe EMP and this is how it will display the structure along with the key constraints and whether null value is allowed or not, is it going to be what is the default thing, is it not null or null, all these things we will see them when we talk about constraints. So, this is about describing the structure. The last one is the comments. In a SQL, how do I specify the comments? Comments are generally used for the user to understand the purpose of that command or things. So, comment can be of single line, multi line or inline comments. A single line comment starts with the double hyphen. A multi line comment can be enclosed between a slash star and closing as star slash. So, a comment which continues on the next line as well. And then coming to the inline comment that can be built within a statement or otherwise in a multi line uh, content, I do have one of the statement which is not a part of the comment. So, in such case I can use those slashes, the comments are enclosed between slash star and slash star slash, but the uh, sub, uh, submissions or partitions there can be with the slashes. So, this is an example for the inline comment. So, comments are going to serve as the basic descriptions for the commands that we have used. So, this is all about the DDL commands, we will see the integrity constraints in our next video. Thank you.